Hey everybody, this is Monsel with Neutropedia. I keep squinting. <laughs> I keep squinting. And this is squinting. <laughs> and I'm Mallory. And we're gonna do road Q&A number two from Fayetteville, Arkansas, the day before we head out to Albuquerque, New Mexico. So let's get started with the questions. Okay, first question. What frequency of nootropic use seems best to most people? Great question. I actually just put out a video on how often should I take nootropics and my answer differs from most because people believe if they take a certain nootropic that works for them, they should take it every single day or at best cycle off a couple of days. Now in my experience, nootropics actually build a tolerance rather quickly. My suggestion is to use nootropics no more than twice in a row. And sometimes make sure that you're taking three, even four days off of nootropics each week. So there's no one size fits all answer to that question. However, each nootropic is gonna be different, but try to vary the nootropic usage day by day. So about how many nootropics do you cycle through each week? So I cycle through about three to five different nootropics. Some days I'll take nootropics purely for their uh, immune boosting or adaptogenic properties. And other times I will take them for focus and concentration, sometimes creativity or memory. All right, let's go to the next question. What is good for brain fog caused by Lyme disease? That's another very good question, though it probably only impacts a certain percentage of my viewers or the population, so I'll keep it brief. Lyme disease usually comes with a bite of a tick or some kind of insect, oftentimes in the northeast of the United States, and my real knowledge of how to prevent the, the brain fog from Lyme disease come from two different sources. One is Tim Ferriss, who talks a lot about his own experiences with Lyme disease, where he used a ketogenic diet and exogenous ketones in order to help reduce the brain fog that he experienced. Now the second account comes from another YouTuber by the name of Steve Cronin, who had Lyme disease that was debilitating for many years, and he used modafinil that was prescribed by his psychiatrist or doctor in order to help him at least get a few hours of work done and remove that brain fog. Now the last item that I just remembered to reduce brain fog that comes with Lyme disease is from researcher and writer Stephen Kotler who wrote uh, The Rise of Superman. He does a lot of research on flow and his research on flow suggests to him that when he, was use, when he had Lyme disease and he went surfing, the surfing and the flow experience that comes from that type of activity flushed his immune system and allowed him to at least spend some time in his writing while he had Lyme disease. Hmm, interesting. Would you say that the brain fog caused by Lyme disease is similar to brain fog caused by, say, um, someone who has celiac and when they eat gluten? Well, I think it's probably going to be a little bit different mechanisms, but all of the options that I mentioned will probably still help. Hmm. A, keto a ketogenic diet will probably still reduce brain fog in certain instances, and so will modafinil or a state of flow, a psychological state of flow. So I think either way it's probably applicable, though the, the reasons for the brain fog are probably quite different. Cool. Next question. What is the best nootropic for anxiety? Ooh, this is a difficult question to answer because anxiety is often caused by completely different things. Somebody might be anxious because they have too much adrenaline in their system, which can be caused by using r which might be the case that I'm struggling with right now, or even just caffeine or going to the gym. So 
in, in, in an instance like that, it, you know, something like L-theanine might be useful. That's a great pairing with caffeine to reduce anxiety, but also get stimulation. Now, if you're talking about anxiety that is related to the GABA system, the GABAminergic system, then there are some really great nootropics. A personal favorite is lemon balm. Lemon balm is, you can either use an extract or a tea, but it helps to prevent the breakdown of GABA in the brain so that most people experience less anxiety. Uh, if there's, uh, you know, other types of problems with serotonin, then I might say uh, St. John's wort is a really great serotonin uh, nootropic that's also natural. And of course, in general, I like to uh, suggest ashwagandha because it has so many thousands of years of uh, credibility in certain communities. Yeah. This one kind of hits close to home for me, as you know. So. When I take nootropics that are supposed to help with anxiety, sometimes I'll feel a little bit lethargic, which is why I do like the ones like L-theanine when it's mixed with caffeine. But is there any one in particular that um, doesn't cause as much like low energy or sleepiness or drowsiness? There's not, it, again, it's gonna depend somewhat on the mechanism that you're trying to modulate because each brain is different and one experiences anxiety like I said in completely different ways but typically you know even a strong drug like tianeptine mm -hmm. you have taken it in the past and if I remember correctly uh, you told me that there was also some feeling of lethargy that came with that so I think there's so much individualistic variation. It's really going to be up to uh, you or the listener to make sure you test and try out different things and how they make you feel. Sure, sure. All right, last question. What is the best nootropic to help fight Parkinson's disease? Good question. Parkinson's disease, in addition to many other uh, neurodegenerative diseases, are increasing in prevalence in America and the Western world simply because we're aging and we're not really fully understanding how to continue health over the long term. Parkinson's disease is usually, don't quote me on this because I don't know all the details, but it's typically some kind of malfunctioning with the dopaminergic system. Often the prescription for Parkinson's disease is uh, some type of dopamine releasing agent and a common natural alternative is mecunoprurians. Mecunoprurians is a natural extract, but unfortunately, as I've mentioned in previous videos, it bypasses an enzyme called tyrosine hydroxylase, and typically we want to avoid bypassing that enzyme when possible, so I might suggest something like L-tyrosine or N-acetyl L-tyrosine as well. Uh, however, it does depend on what stage of Parkinson's disease you're trying to overcome. So anyway, that is my essential response. Uh, obviously, Parkinson's disease can be quite debilitating, so visit a doctor if you have to. But mecunoprurians is a powerful uh, Parkinson's uh, nootropic many people use. In fact, there's some studies that show it has comparable or better effects than prescription drugs. Hmm. That's all for today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so that's number two. Again, let us know in the comments if you are into these Q&As. I know that the, the, most of my other content focuses on one specific topic, and this is bouncing around. But again, go ahead and subscribe right here, and let us know in the comments. See you guys next time.